Hey everyone, Melissa here with The Creative Season. So this week we are grabbing um, our canvas. As you saw, we're gonna paint a canvas and then paint watercolor flowers, take a Sharpie. We'll be writing a Bible verse on the canvas and then adding the watercolors onto it with some Mod Podge. Now, I paint lots of flowers. That takes the pressure off so we can choose which ones we want to include in our collage. This is a wonderful project that you can create over the course of a weekend. You definitely need to let some time uh, for drying uh, for between the flowers as well as the Mod Podge. Um, I hope you have a wonderful Resurrection Sunday and a wonderful Easter weekend. I share some of my thoughts and feelings about the holiday with you in the video, so enjoy. Hey everyone, so in this session, or in this section, I am just covering my canvas with acrylic paint. If you have regular craft paint, that will work. I had some other colors, so I needed something thicker to put on it. And then after it's, it's all painted, we're gonna let it dry. Okay, you're gonna want your canvas to be completely dry, and then you're gonna take a Sharpie pen and start to write a Bible verse of your choice onto the um, onto the canvas. I use a ruler to separate so the lines are even. I write in all caps, and you're gonna see what that looks like in the next session. Hi everyone, well we are back with this special Easter 2023 painting and we're doing something a little bit different, putting together a project today. And so um, this, I have my canvas, it's all nice and painted. There's some blue showing through, but that's, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start painting the flowers and then I'll do the writing on the canvas after. So I'm gonna set that to the side and I'm gonna go ahead now. I've got some flowers sketched. You can see that the sketching's pretty light. You know, nothing, nothing formal because all of these will be cut out. So now I'm just thinking along with the yellow, what I want to, what colors I want. So I'm gonna probably have, I'm definitely of course, greens, oranges, pinks. I wanna bring in that yellow that I already have going on. So I think I have some cadmium yellow that's really nice and bright, and I'm gonna start using that just on some of the inside of my flowers, and then we'll do a different color for some of those petals. So I'm just dropping that in. I think too, over here, instead of using an orange, I'm gonna create an orange with the pink and yellow. So dropping that. These are going to be like the wildflower, the poppies that I've been seeing. And I'm going to just create a really watery yellow because I want the colors to dance. I was noticing the poppies that are open yet, they're mostly just green. So I'm gonna leave those alone for now. I'm gonna pick up some pink and I have permanent rose on my watercolor board. So we'll put that here and making sure you can see that. Let me back this up just a little bit and I'll come in a little bit as well. But I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dip in that pink and just adding it around. And that's gonna create a really beautiful orange without using another color because I'm gonna use the same pink and some other flowers. And I want them all to have the same undertones. So I'm just adding that in here. And I, it's been, the last few weeks have been so busy in such good ways. But sometimes when it's this busy with all the good things, I just start to crave some quiet time. I'm actually gonna go for a walk, hopefully catch the sunset after this finishes. I do love that it's lighter out later. Just adding that in. We're gonna head, go ahead and start moving along here. My goal is to spend, you know, 10 or 15 minutes painting these lovely flowers. We're just gonna go ahead and go bold on the pink over here. And I'm just laying that down. And what I wanted to create too is a sense of maybe layers of petals. So I'm gonna go ahead, kind of just dancing around with my paintbrush. I'm probably gonna drop in a couple, another color, I'm just not sure what. I don't know if I wanna introduce purple into this. I might use the um, the violet that I have. It's, which might not, which is not gonna be such a contrast. It's gonna blend a little bit with the pink. And so if I use that, I'll even pick up a little bit. I mean, I could use the purple, my dioxazine purple, but I'm actually gonna go with the mauve and maybe just add in, yeah, oh, see, that's nice. Just a little bit, not too much. A little bit around 
here and then over here I can add in and just moving around, just kind of dancing. I, th not all of these flowers are going to fit on the canvas, but whenever I do projects as, like this, inevitably a couple flowers pop really nicely, and then the other ones just don't. And so instead of trying to put the keep the pressure on and really creating all the flowers that make you know having that pressure, they've all got to work. I like to provide options. And since with watercolor, once you have your material set out. You might as well just keep painting, right? I'm gonna do this one pink over here. Again, we just want them to sing, so I'm gonna use all the same core colors. And this will just be pure pink. And I've got the little stamens coming up here. I'm gonna to have to, I'm gonna leave some white, a little baby one right here. I'm gonna go ahead with these guys too. And maybe over here, I will go ahead and create just like pure yellow maybe. I think so, and then what I'll do with the little seeds popping up will be a different color. So every year I love creating an Easter Resurrection Sunday art, and I'll include the link below to some of the other projects that I've done. Um, they've all been so much fun in so many ways. This year I wanted to create something a little bit different with using some words on the canvas and I just was having a hard time kind of really thinking of a, the scene that I had time to create that I felt would be um, something that I could teach. You know, some week, again, it was just, it's been so busy. I thought, you know, we're just going to do what we love to do and that's flowers. And I love to imagine there's an old song by Sandy Patty, like 80s old. And I think it's called, it wasn't a morning like this. And in the song, she imagines what it was like on the morning when Jesus rose from the dead. And she imagines it from nature's point of view. And, you know, she said, she sings, uh, did, you know, did the ground shake? Did the wind feel different? Did the birds sing differently? And I've always thought, you know, well, what about, you know, it makes me think of the flowers. Was there a response in the flowers? Did they open up? Were the colors more brilliant? Um, you know, how, what was that response when Jesus rose from the dead, when he went from being dead to being alive? Um, did, did the garden look different when Mary and, um, went and looked at the tomb, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and the other women, I think it was Salome, if I'm probably not saying her name right. Did they notice anything differently? They were probably so excited. They didn't notice any of the nature, but I do wonder, my curiosity is, is, is wondering the difference of what maybe nature, how nature responded. Were the birds gathering around the tomb? If the Lord spoke and the world came into being and they recognize him as Lord over all, then surely nature must have responded in some way. That's not theology. That is just my imagination. And, um, and you know, inspired by the song and inspired by when I read. But there's such a, a joyful celebration um, for so many of us who put our hope and trust in Jesus and have seen him do such wonderful things for us, right? Resurrect us in so many ways, our own lives. Such a great way to celebrate. So we are celebrating, or I'm celebrating with these beautiful paintings of flowers along with the word art. And I have end of just writing that verse on the canvas and we'll, we'll be using a Sharpie pen for that. And then laying the petals down over it with some Mod Podge. And so this is just a beautiful way to display art, create something memorable. You can write a prayer on the back or some thoughts about Easter this year. And um, it just, I think it's a really, it's a fun project. It's a very fun project. So you can see that I am just making my way around, going, this over here, um, I realized I didn't like where the stem was coming off this flower, so I just changed it. So again, we're cutting all these flowers out and we have that freedom to change it up, so no pressure. The pressure is off to create something that you have to feel is really perfect. Now let's go ahead and grab some of that yellow and we are going to dip that in our green as well. So I'm just gonna pick up some yellow, wipe off your brush really, really well, or even use a different brush before you dab it in the yellow so the yellow stays nice and fresh. And I'm gonna go down here and just making sure that I have the, that colors that are singing, that are moving all around the different, the different parts of the flower and sharing the colors across the different areas will really help the whole painting sing and come alive. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna 
put a little yellow right in these guys and right down here. I'm gonna come in with some more green and I'm gonna actually start with the yellow over here and then come in with some green. We're gonna just dab the pink onto those guys, but not yet because they're still wet and that makes me so nervous. I am using permanent green today, but if you have a hooker's green, that's my other favorite, that's gonna go on beautifully, a light or a medium. Um, sap green might be a little bit too warm and muted for this if you're using the bright colors, for example, on your canvas. So whatever color you painted your canvas, make sure you incorporate at least a little bit of that color into one of your flowers. So if you did a blue, um, at least just a little bit of blue, even if that blue was added to your stems to create uh, just again the sense of harmonizing with the whole the whole piece. Okay, I'm going to come back with my green right over here. I really love these, how these have turned out this leaf right here. This is really pretty. I'm going to go ahead and go down here, adding some shadows. I'm going to rinse my brush up. I still need to do right over here, this guy, this beautiful flower. I'm going to grab my mauve and just do a nice deep, I'm going to add a little bit more mauve over here too. Remember not covering everything up. We want to let some white splatter out. And on this guy, I'm going to go backwards where then I'm going to take some of the pink and dip some pink in here for a chest. And that'll brighten up the flower a bit because that mob is definitely a bit darker. With that same brush, I'm going to just come back over here and just dab in some colors. I like this one a lot, actually, very much so. A little bit more right over here. Okay, so then coming around back over here, I'm going to take a really small brush. And so if you have a super tiny brush, grab it now. I'm gonna grab over to my other table. So for over here on the pink, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna get some pink on this itty bitty brush. And it really is, it's a tiny, it's like it is a number one. Or let the painting completely dry before you do this. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna just go ahead and add in those little um, tendrils and the colors on top. And it's a little bit wet, but we're gonna be very, very careful. Okay, and then over here on this one, I think I'm gonna take the purple, so that dark auburn, that way if it bleeds into the pink, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna go over here and that I that looks really nice. And I have a, there, that actually looks good. It was dry enough. Now I wanna create a little bit more intensity. Oh, I got some, some paint on here, not a big deal. I'm gonna go and grab over here, get this pink, and just down here, let's create a little bit more of some shadowing, right? And then down on this one too. So you just notice where you might need to add a little bit more depth. And it might be, remember with watercolor, if you want it darker, just add some more paint. So like for this, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit more here. And I'm gonna take my yellow and just a little bit of pink and mix them on my palette. And then just, just a little bit, that might be too much. I could always come and dab it out. I'm actually gonna use it right up here to create a darker petal over here. And what I can always do too, is if I think it's too much, I can come and grab my paper towel. And you know what, I, I could dab a little bit and just just a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead also and let that color sink in. And I'm gonna do again just a hint. And I'm gonna let that sink in here too, because that's pretty saturated in there. Okay, now what I am gonna do, look around your painting once more and think to yourself, where do I need more color? Where does it need to darken up? Where would the shadows be? I haven't peeked at how long we've been painting. I'm gonna take a guess that we're probably around 11 minutes or so. I'm gonna come around here, get adding that intensity. I do wanna do a bit of a wash because even though we're cutting out the flowers, we won't cut them out exactly on the lines. So let's go ahead. And if you wanna wait for everything to dry, do so. Because it's always a little bit risky. We talked about that before, but since I'm recording and the light is leaving, I wanna make sure I take care of my colors. I'm gonna just go a little bit more darker. I love, again, I love that one right over here. That one turned out beautifully. Just really nice, right? Okay, 
So go ahead now. I have everything. It's looking lovely. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wipe out my brush. I am, for this one, I think I'm going to just take a very, very watery pink. And I'm just going to go ahead and on the, some of these sides, I'm actually going to get more water. And you don't have to. If you want to leave it white, you can leave it white. I might do some of both. And I'm just going to move this around. Because remember, we are going to be cutting these out. And then I have like a couple flowers on on all of them actually. So I just want a little bit of contrast and not just straight on white. I'm going to come over here and using that round tip, I can get in the edges, but I don't want it to bleed. I'm just going to pick up some more water and I'm just going to spread it out. I'm not picking up any more paint. I just added water to my brush and that looks really pretty. Lovely. Okay. We're going to come over here too. I did pick up a little bit more paint that time. Go in really carefully. Where are we? Oh, we're 14 minutes in, so we're doing good. And just getting, getting some more water and moving this around. And I'm just going to kind of keep doing this. And then I'm going to let everything dry and then I will cut it out. So go ahead and finish up your painting. Take your time. If you have a little bit of time, let everything dry and then come back and do your wash. So no bleeding of flowers into the background will occur. And then I'm going to see back here, but see kind of how that kind of gives some nice movement, right? And if you wanted to do splattering, you certainly could do splattering as well. And then again, look at your colors. I think over here, um, I actually might do, I think I'm going to do a yellow over here. I know that's really bright, but that's okay. I want to do more of a, just again, moving this around, moving that color around. And on the other side, I might do yellow. I might do pink on the other side. I'm kind of just going. Uh oh, I got, see, I got a little bit in there, so be careful. Don't do that. If that happens though, just watch it. Use your dry watercolor brush to mop things up. Grab some water. I'm going to take some water, move some of that color out over here. Dance it around these edges. That looks so, so lovely. I think that looks very nice. And on this one, you know what? Let's do yellow. We're, we'll, we'll bookend with yellow here and just moving it around. And I got a little bit of water logged there. That's okay. I'm just going to kind of let that go. I'll take my water, my towel here and just stab it. And then up here, I'm just going to move around the edges using the edge, taking some water, moving that around. And then you can go as slow or as maybe slow, maybe not as fast as you want. <laughs> maybe just as slow. And you know, it's a wonderful time too. Maybe you have some music on. Maybe you're spending a bit of time in prayer or just thanking the Lord for what he's done for you this year. Thanking him for Easter and why you're so grateful that he rose from the dead and what his resurrection means to you personally. It is just a precious week. Holy week is such a memorable week. A week to step away. I know the world is always seems like the world is crazy, right? There's a million things to distract us, which I think why it's even more important to come away for a while as Jesus invites us to and rest in him and worship him. And what better week to do that than Holy Week. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and then we'll come back. I'll have cut everything out and we'll keep on continuing finishing up our project. All right, you guys, I'll see you back here in just a couple of minutes. Hi everyone. Well, let's finish up with our project. So I'm hoping that you are really starting to see this come together. I know after I've cut out my flowers and as you can see, we don't keep a lot of that wash around them, but it's just enough, right? It's just enough to really give a gentle contrast to the colors, which I really love. And remember too, that we had painted more flowers than necessary to take that pressure off. Because right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose which flowers I'm gonna put on. And we're gonna arrange them in a lovely collage and play with them. And I want you to be really gracious towards yourself if like the writing didn't turn out quite right. Mine is always a little bit messier than I want it to be. But you know what, um, that's okay. Like I've got a gap over here because while I don't, I just don't like the words to split in half, but you know what, that's fine because I can also, you know, use the flowers to cover that up, that gap up. So what I usually do is I just take a few minutes and I start just playing with these. 
uh, playing with these and moving them around. What do, how do I want them to look and do I want something more of, I could almost do a bouquet. I kind of coming out like this. I'm kind of thinking that that would be that would be nice, but I think I'm going to do something a little bit different. And obviously, I you know the words are coming through in the background, which are part, but not you know of of this whole glorious. They are just kind of our, our proclamation of Eastern Resurrection Sunday and the gloriousness of the day. And that's why I had chosen some of the colors I did, just the brightness and the light. You can certainly fill it up, or you can keep it a little bit more sparse, just depending on what you want. Now I will say as I'm kind of looking around here, again I'm going to play with these and then I'm going to start putting the podge podge on and even I sometimes will start even looking at different colors and thinking to myself of you know kind of what I want. I actually kind of like to do a little bit of a bouquet. We're, we're, going, to, we're going to play with this. I do like this flower maybe coming over here on this side. I did want to show you too before I start putting these down. I put the Bible verse that I had chosen over on the side. So you might want to do that if you haven't already. Um, you know, any of the Bible verses that you choose are just going to be lovely. Something else to personalize this is you might, I don't have a ton of room and I had a thicker canvas. You may have a thinner one. Um, I just happened to use what I had at home. You might want to write a prayer or the date or a prayer on side the canvas. That can be a really wonderful way of just meaningful of what's going on in your life and what you are particularly grateful this particular Easter um, Sunday, Easter. I, it's actually Good Friday as I'm finishing up this recording. Um, and so again, just some thoughts to personalize this. You could certainly write around the sides too if you were on a, using a thicker one. Uh, canvas that I have. Also be aware too, uh, not everything, you know, you see some of the blue coming through from the previous paint job. I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so I think I am going to put this guy over here, that flower. Uh, this flower just seems to be really nice here. And I'm even, I might bend that leaf over a little bit. I think I just want to do some variety in color, but also in shapes, you know. I think I might have this one over here. We kind of, we do want an odd number, I will say that. So do whatever you do, make sure it's an odd number of flowers. Okay, and that could be one, two, three, four, five, right? That would be an odd number as well. So again, I am playing around. I'm thinking this pink is so um, bold. I might end up kind of going, using, using these. I'm gonna maybe use these two for another project. And I will go ahead and overlap some of these. That's what I think I'm going to do. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead. Maybe they're coming up like that. That looks nice. I think, I think, I think that's what I'm going to do here. I might move this guy right over here. And you know, it's fun just to play with it. But the ones you kind of like your foundational flowers, you know which ones. I have some Mod Podge here. It is pretty thick. And with the watercolor paper is thick as well, so that's why I usually put a pretty generous layer of Mod Podge on. And this is the part two where always I like to give that warning as if you're as you're putting the, the the whole project together and you're thinking to yourself, it's not quite looking like I thought it would. Always make sure you give that Mod Podge 24 hours to rest because tomorrow at this time the whole thing is going to look lovely. Sometimes when you put that initial layer of Mod Podge on, it looks a little bit um. It just looks a little bit unfinished, is what it looks like, as everything's dry. I do make sure that I have enough, enough Mod Podge around the edges. You might, your paint might smear just a little bit. Don't worry about that. And I'm just making sure, you know what, maybe I'll put this pink one kind of, I'm still kind of playing until you put that Mod Podge down. It's just, you can kind of keep playing and keep playing I want, with some of these colors. Okay, and some of these flowers, I think I'm actually going to maybe go a little bit like this. And you know, I will go ahead and put that pink down. So we're going to head again, nice layer of Mod Podge all the way down. And we're going to cover the whole thing really in Mod Podge so it's evenly shiny. You might notice that your pen, I have let, I did end up letting my pen dry. It, of course, it was dry, but really kind of settling in. So I didn't want that Mod Podge to pick up 
and smear a lot of my writing. If you're using a Sharpie, it should be okay versus like, you know, a Crayola marker. Okay, so I've got that one down. I'm gonna come over here and you know, I actually think I will go back. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go like this, I think. I think that's what I'm gonna do with the little yellow one over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay down my Mod Podge here. We're gonna maybe a little bit of overlapping as they dance together. I actually dug out that Sandy Patty. Um, I found a, 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 like a best of Sandy Patty on um, Apple, or not Apple, um, Amazon Music and was listening to some of her Easter songs. It brought back a lot of memories. Okay, and then I was listening to, I found, I discovered a new, a new artist. I think it's Cornerstone Music, I believe, but he, um, the gentleman behind that has, let me go over, I have my music up. Yeah, Cornerstone, The Corner Room, The Corner Room. And he has a beautiful um, Easter album, and there is, a movement where he he performs and there's beautiful instruments with the whole chapter of Isaiah 53. It's always nice to find a new rendition of Easter music and I do love music that just quotes right just takes scripture and puts it to music. I'm always not always I'm often trying to memorize scripture and you know hearing it singing it is just aids my ability to remember it and really cement it in my mind and in my heart. So, okay, we're finishing up here. I've got my last one. And you know, it is a bit of committing, you know, if you're not quite sure about it. And then it comes to be like, you know what, we just have to commit. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna play with this guy. I think I'm just gonna kind of set it a little bit right over the top. We'll do a little bit of layering right here. And then kind of look around C of two, making sure your edges are all nice and down. And if you need to move anything just slightly, this is your moment. This is your time while not everything is sticky. I am gonna just move this a little bit over to the side so I don't lose that pretty poppy right there. And just smooth it out with your, your thumb or finger. Smooth out any excess Mod Podge. And then if I see anything sticking up, I'll just kind of even it out like that. Now again, we're gonna let this sit. It's gonna be beautiful and shiny. If you had any of your leaves bending over like mine did, just go ahead and smooth that out there on the side. And if you want to just put a little Mod Podge over here where you were writing, that'll seal that up as well. Okay, I think it looks lovely, right? It looks really, really lovely. I love that we have this beautiful Easter collage and um, it's just a wonderful way to take some quiet time and reflect on the beauty of Resurrection Sunday and all that Jesus has done for us. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hold on to your extra flowers. Even hold on to your scraps of paper that you cut because you can use those for um, all sorts of different projects. It's watercolor paper that has paint on it. You can use it for mosaic projects. I'm gonna find something fun to do with it. So enjoy and happy Easter.